Okay, I'm back and the chickens are still hanging out, but we're not going to get distracted by them. We're going to get right to mixing a glaze. So first I want to talk a bit about glaze mixing safety. You know, it is powdered material and it is hazardous to breathe. So you want to make sure you have a mask and not just one of those cheap dust masks or painting masks. You want to get a mask that has P100 cartridges. That's what these little purple things are. You also want to make sure if it's not called a P100 that it will filter out micron particles to 0 0.3. 0 0.3. That's it. That's what you need to remember. So this lovely thing is what you should wear while you're making glazes. If you have sensitive eyes, you could wear a pair of clear goggles. I'm wearing gloves because it's so cold out, but um, if you are sensitive, you might want to wear a pair of rubber gloves, like really nice um, housework gloves, you know, the ones that come up to your elbow, like, or mad scientist gloves. Oh yeah, like pull them up and snap them too. That'd be awesome. All right, I don't know if you can hear me once I put this on because it muffles my voice and I'm gonna be mixing the glaze with this on, but ooh, that's nice. But until then, I will take it off to talk you through everything. All right, so once you have all your safety equipment, you're ready to make your glaze. Now I have behind me on my table, which is covered in ice, so you have to ignore that. I have a digital scale to weigh out my ingredients. You don't have to use a digital, you could use a triple beam balance or another type of scale. This is just what I found. It works really well for me. It won't measure a ton of material at a time. So sometimes I have to break it up into two batches, meaning if I need 4,000 grams, I measure out 2,000 grams and then 2,000 grams and just add it. Not a big deal. We can all work with that, right? So I like the accuracy of the digital scale and you can switch between grams and pounds. So when I'm not using this to mix glaze, I do wipe it off safety first, and I use it in the studio to weigh out my clay. So I can weigh out, you know, a pound and a half of clay for some nice giant mugs, or I can use it out here to measure 3,000 grams of silica for the glaze. All right, so I have that. Now these usually come with a little plastic shield that you can flip over and use as a dish. They're no good. They're no good. Don't use those. I use one of these five quart mixing buckets from your hardware store. It's easier to use and it holds a lot more material. So all I do is I put it on my scale, turn my scale on. Now digital scales are easy to use. I'm not going to show you how to use them, but you just turn it on and then you hit ZT, zero tear. That means you're zeroing out your counter, which means it's not counting the weight of this. So basically with this way sitting on the scale, the scale thinks it's at zero. It's already accounted for the weight of this dish, bucket, whatever you got going. All right, so I'm currently in pounds, so let me sit this guy over to grams. This one also does ounces too, which is kind of nice. All right, so I'm ready to rock and roll. I have got my glaze recipe right here. I copied it off my big book onto a piece of paper I can just throw away. I like to keep all my glazes in a notebook where they're nice and safe in the studio, but I do always copy them off onto another sheet of paper that if I get glaze on it, I can just ditch it, I don't care. But I don't want to ruin my notebook, so be smart. So I have that and a pencil so I can check off as I add the ingredients. If you don't check it off, you don't know what you put in. So you can be halfway through your recipe, look down and forget if you put that thing in or not. So have something to mark it off. Now here's my five gallon bucket. It's messy because I have a tiny bit of chun. I have about that much chun still in the bottom. Normally if I was making a glaze for the first time, I would have a completely clean washed out bucket. Now this has been used for chun for years and I'm going to keep using it. So I'm just going to add my dry ingredients into this and then I'll work from there and I'll put it through the sieve from this bucket into another bucket then back to this bucket because it's a double sieve process. Which is fun because we all like more work. Alright, so I have my bucket ready and let's get measuring. The first ingredient I have is G200 which is a feldspar and I have that behind me in a bucket. Oh Benny, I have another chicken back here too. Benny, honey, you can't make a nest there. That's, that's not good. Don't do that. Look out. She's like, no, mama, I'm staying. So pardon my backside. <laughs> I didn't think about that when I was uh, going to make this video. So sometimes I'll store my ingredients in these five-gallon plastic buckets. You know, the paper sacks that they come in when you get 50 pounds of a material, they don't last. If they get wet, the paper bag that they're in breaks apart and then your material spills out everywhere. That's not good. 
Not in the slightest. So uh, that one had a bit of a little bit of leaves on the top, but you know what? The leaves aren't going to matter because when I sieve it out, the leaves will be caught in the top, and I'll just throw it away. Goodness, what's up, you guys? I know you're hanging out with me. All right, so I need 3,800 grams of G200. Now I'm just going to start measuring that out. I don't know if my scale will let me do 3,800 grams. We're going to find out. All right, we're at zero. We're ready to rock and roll. I'm going to put my mask on because safety first. All right, can you all hear me? Let's measure. So I'm scooping it out into my bucket. Until I get to 3,800. grab that and if you know about glaze mixing and this is boring feel free to like zip on through if you don't know anything about glaze mixing watching someone make glazes could be pretty exciting I mean who knows but I'm gonna grab the zinc oxide I've only got three more things to add after that so let me just quickly pop in it's just in the door here and grab that and we'll keep going with this glaze. told you I'd be fast all right, so a little bit about zinc oxide before I measure this out. Zinc oxide has this tendency when it has moisture in it, when it, it will absorb it from the air. And so instead of being this really lovely fine powder, it granulates and becomes hard. And sometimes it's little tiny sand-sized pebbles, sometimes big old rocks. So you want to put your zinc oxide somewhere where it's not going to get moisture in it. And you could even put one of those little discs that absorb moisture. And if you don't have one, you can make your own. Just a little piece of clay that's been bisced will work because it still absorbs moisture. 
little tip right there. Make your own. Okay, so I have zinc oxide here. I need to add 1,200 grams. Now there is 453 grams in a pound. So when you're buying, when you're buying your glaze ingredients, the interesting thing is they sell the ingredients in pounds, but you mix the glazes up in grams. I know, no consistency, but that's just how it is. So when you buy 1,200 grams of zinc oxide, you need about 500 pounds. Now, my guy's awesome. I know if I get five pounds, he's giving me like six. So I know I can get that little extra, you know, order 10 pounds, you'll be covered. Just do your conversions, 553 grams per pound. 10 grams, 4,530 grams, right? Okay, let's put the zinc in. So my chickens keep coming in here under my feet to say no. They know I'm here. And because I'm their mama hen, they always want to be around me. So once they hear my voice and me talking, they come right to me. And I don't really like them around when I'm mixing glazes. You know, they probably breathe a lot of nasty stuff just digging up dirt, but I don't want to add more to it. Like, they're my chicky babies. Okay, 600 grams of OM4. OM4 is a ball clay. And you know, if you make your own clay, and if you make glazes, you're gonna want a 50 pound bag of that because you use it in everything. So let's get some OM4. making all that racket. She wants me to pick her up again. All right, so the next I have is silica. Silica is your glass former, and it's basically just ground up sand, right? It's powdered glass. That's the thing that's gonna make your glaze really strong, and in most cases, the gloss. All right, so let's get some silica. And that's 3,000 grams. 3,000!
done. So the silica is the last of my base ingredients to go in this glaze. The only thing I have left to add is the copper carbonate. And that I have over here in a bucket. I always keep these, they come in little bags, but I always store things in extra containers, just like I did with the G200. Um, you know, what I really need to do in my studio is all these bags behind me need to go in buckets, but I haven't got there. And I've been doing this for 10 years, so a lot of these have been in their bags for 10 years. I've been meaning to get to it, but you know, like everything in life, it has its like <laughs> place of importance in the list. All right, so 50 grams of copper carbonate. Now this is a heavy metal. You do not want to get this on your skin if you can help it. You definitely don't want to ingest it, especially in the powder form, it's dangerous. You do not want to inhale it. So I'm putting my mask right back on and then I'll measure this out. So I only need 50 grams. So I usually keep, I buy those cheap tablespoons from the dollar store or wherever you get them. And I usually keep them in all of my oxides. I just leave it in the container and it lives in there and belongs there. They're so inexpensive and you really need a way to scoop them out. So why not just save yourself the trouble and buy a couple sets and keep them in your copper and in your cobalt and your iron. All right, 50 grams, here we go. And I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my glove off so I don't get the cobalt or the copper on it. in the bag and it was easy enough to do and then I had to scoop a little bit back so I still needed that little spoon in there but I didn't have to scoop everything out which was nice okay so the next step is you have to add your liquid to the glaze and you know the amount varies by glaze and its specific gravity I am not going to go in detail on specific gravity that is a whole oh my gosh that's a whole semester in college I tell you all right, so what I'm gonna do here is first, you might have wondered why I have a big old stick. I'm gonna, be dr I'm gonna dry mix this with my mask on so I incorporate all the ingredients together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour enough water to cover the dry ingredients so it starts to settle. So I'm not even gonna fill this bucket up all the way. I'm probably gonna fill it up about half. Now I know from experience that I'll probably end up filling this glaze bucket almost to the tippy top with water before I'm done. But when you're making a glaze for the first time, you don't know how thick you're going to want it, so you don't want to add too much water. You know, you can always add more water to the glaze, but removing water from a glaze, oh, I tell you, it's a pain. You don't want to do it. It can be done, but it is a major undertaking, and it requires days of letting the glaze just sit and settle down and then skimming little bits of water off, like months' worth of silliness. So don't do that. Okay, so let's dry mix. And then to add a bit of water. Safety time. Look, I got a great big cauldron. I'm gonna stand off to this side because the wind's blowing everything that way, so I think I'm pretty good. You will know when you've dry mixed it enough when all the materials seem to blend together to form one color. So that like bright minty green of the copper will be all blended in with the bright white and the buff and all those other colors that are in there. So now I'm gonna add the water. I've got a few buckets here. You know, cats. Cat litter 
comes in these great containers. When you're done, you rinse them out and you use them for water. I don't have uh, running water in my studio, so this is how I get all my water. I have tons of these buckets. So thank you, Kat, for having litter and needing me to scoop it and having to buy litter, because now I get containers. Like, win-win. All right, so as I'm pouring this in, it's kind of percolating down. And I think you can kind of see if you look down there. See it wiggling a bit? That's because it's like, it's like bubbling, actually. And that's because air is coming up that was in between the dry particles down at the bottom. So that's going to do its bubbly thing. And you just let it bubble down and settle. And once it stops, you can check it with the stick and stir it. Now, I, this is my glaze mixing stick. I don't beat people with it. I just mix glazes. Um, I wash it off every time I use it, so I don't contaminate from glaze to glaze. But, you know, walk softly, carry a big stick. All right, so I'm going to let that go. Let me just check to see what's going on. That's going to need a lot more water. So oftentimes what I'll do, you can see the consistency. It's like, it's like bake, making pie dough. You see how it's kind of dry and wet in places? Now once you add the water and it's all coated, like all the particles are coated with water, you don't have to worry about the mask anymore. So that can go. But still there's a bit of dry particles in there because the water is settling down in. I just wipe that off. Pour the rest of that in there. So I'll usually let this settle, like go have lunch, come back, see what's going on, add more water. If I'm in a hurry, like I kind of am today, because it's cold out here, I will keep waiting like I'm doing. All right, so this bucket, this bucket's empty. I always keep the lids and put the lids on these buckets. If you're going to use these for any kind of material in your studio, you can also store dry materials in these containers. A little note of, of um, safety for the critters that live in your world. Keep the caps on when you're not using because I keep water in here and I once forgot to put the top on and I came in the next day and a little chipmunk had fallen in and he didn't make it. It was really sad. I actually, I buried him and I threw the container away because I just couldn't use it anymore after what happened. It was like, you know, a coffin. It's awful. So please, keep the tops on. Save little critters. Plus bugs and other crap will get in there and you don't want that. Alrighty, let's check. Had to share that little sad story with you guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's looking good. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the video here and then I'm going to finish adding my water and I'm going to go in the studio and I'm going to do sieving. I'm going to sieve it for you all. So we'll do a little sieving video. Sieving takes forever. I hate it. I don't hate many things in the studio, but I hate sieving. I really do. If I could have an assistant do one thing, it would just be sieve my glazes. But I only need someone to do that for like one day every six months. So nobody really wants to do that. All right, well, I hope this helped you learn how to mix your glaze and maybe taught you a little bit more about materials. If you have any questions or suggestions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to me yet here, please do so and turn off notifications and you know follow me across all my social media all right guys thanks for hanging with me with my chickens and listening to me ramble about my little animal stories i'll catch you next time in the studio bye